Hey, what's up? I'm KBHD here. So, let's talk Macs for a minute. So next to me here is the brand new 27 inch iMac. You may have seen that announcement. And this guy is essentially a spec bump, a refresh of a lot of really important pieces inside of the same design iMac we've always known. And first of all, I've already said like in previous videos that I love that Apple is doing more consistent updates to products, at least lately, because in my ideal world, the tech just keeps getting updated over and over, regardless of whatever cycle we're on. Whenever you buy a new piece of tech, it's just the latest version available, kind of like what Tesla does. But computers don't all work that way, so this is about as good as we'll get. Thank you for keeping the iMac updated, Apple. That being said, because of the inevitable iMac refresh, the updated design we're expecting, and the Apple Silicon transition for Macs looming on the horizon, it's not such a straightforward answer to just recommend getting this or not. But let me just show you what's new with this iMac because it's actually a really nice update, all things considered. So it's mostly the 27 inch iMac getting the good stuff. And first of all, it's updated to the latest 10th gen Intel chips and Radeon graphics. So this one I have here is actually specced pretty nicely with the highest end 10 core i9. And you can get it with up to 128 gigs of RAM that is thankfully still user replaceable by this little door here on the back of the 27 inch. And you have the new Radeon 5000 series GPUs minus spec as you can see. And I've only had it for a limited time, about two days, but I have obviously had no performance issues on this brand new machine. And benchmarks show that it is a solid performance upgrade. There is a reason for this new chip. But I think the biggest change is actually that the hard drives are now gone from this lineup. Those fusion drives are also now gone. It is all SSDs all the way through the line up to eight terabytes, which is sick. Now, honestly, this is kind of long overdue. Hard drives instead of SSDs in premium machines in 2020 should basically be a niche thing at this point. The prices come down so much for fast SSDs, which these are, that it's a no brainer. So I'm glad to see SSDs. The one weird thing is if you go spec out a 21 and a half inch iMac right now, you can still find a one terabyte fusion drive. I think that is the last hard drive shipping in an Apple product right now, at least default. Kill that Apple. But you know what makes me really happy to be able to say? They've improved the quality of the webcams. This is now the look of the new 1080p webcam in the iMac 27 inch. Looks much better, again, it's not like some amazing thing, but it's not just the resolution 1080p, it's a physically better sensor, and of course you can see the image quality here. Uh, there's also the microphone quality, which you're hearing, which now is these new studio quality mics, which again is a bit of an exaggeration, but there is one additional microphone around the back of the Mac for better echo and noise cancellation. I guess it makes sense that they could upgrade the physical size of the webcam inside the iMac because there's more room inside this bigger machine. Um, I'm still gonna keep asking for a better webcam in their laptops, but again, when you put it in this, this all-in-one, it makes it that much better of a media machine in these times where we're doing a lot more video conferencing and virtual work. They've also improved the speakers at the bottom of the iMac here. So there's now a dedicated audio controller on the T2 chip. And personally, while I can't really hear much of a max volume difference, I mean, it's already been pretty loud, I can attest for an improvement in the fidelity and just overall quality at most of the existing volume levels, which is always great because a lot of people who use iMacs use these built-in speakers. But the feature I was most interested in when we saw this announcement the other day is the new Nano Texture Matte Glass, which conveniently enough, this Mac behind me actually has. It's hard to tell because there's almost no reflections, but I think this is an option, first of all, that I love and that I think a lot of people buying iMacs will also love. So a lot of you probably remember the Nano Texture option first appearing in the $5,000 Pro Display XDR from last year. It was a $1,000 option, but generally it dramatically reduced glare, and now these things are an order of magnitude easier to work with in this well-lit studio environment. So having this same finish without having to change the color or anything about the bezels is great. It massively cuts down on reflections, as you can tell, and now you can use the iMac in rooms with windows behind you or lamps across the room or just any other types of uncontrollable light that you just don't have to worry about anymore. This is implemented super well. My only question is, it's a $500 option here on the iMac. It was a, it still is a $1,000 option on the Pro Display XDR. Why is this not available on the iMac Pro? 
if you know pros will use it because it's on the pro display and you know regular people love it because matte displays are everywhere and you put it on the iMac, why not put it on the machine both pros and some regular people yet get? So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw this eventually get added to iMac Pro. So anyway, all that great stuff being said, you should still think very carefully about whether you should buy, whether you should spend, starting at $17.99, whether you should spend that much money on a new machine right now at this point in 2020, because there are some things looming on the horizon, which are the inevitable iMac redesign and the Apple silicon transition. See, the iMac is long overdue for redesign. And I'm, I'm not just saying that because people like to just change for the sake of change. They've been using essentially this same design for about eight years now, since 2012. And it's just dated now. Like, look at the size of these bezels. Where else in anywhere in Apple's lineup do you see bezels this big? The chin being this big. Even the port layout around the back. This, this is generally a machine that could use a refresh. And so the rumor is Apple's been working on this, a sort of iMac redesign that looks something like the Pro Display XDR or the iPad Pro with generally more squared off edges, thinner bezels, and all of that same great performance. That would feel a lot more worth the money whenever that happens. But even if, let's say, you are fine with this design, there is also now the already announced transition of all Macs to Apple Silicon that they announced at WWDC. And that's when we saw Apple get on stage and talk about the planned two-year transition period to start moving all of their Macs from Intel's x86 architecture to Apple Silicon. And there are some seriously impressive performance and efficiency and thermal promises that come from all of the potential of moving to Apple Silicon. And we're all hoping this transition goes as smoothly as possible. But importantly, if you are a shopper considering getting an iMac, there are a lot of unanswered questions just in general about what will happen to Intel Macs once this transition period is over. And how long will it take before Intel Macs slowly start to get treated like second-class Macs and start to get less updates and just generally start to fade into the past? So, in the case of this new iMac update and every single Intel Mac update between now and that transition, consider two things. One, how immediately do you actually need to get a new computer? And two, how long do you plan on keeping that Mac? Like sometimes it can be kind of hard to know, but if you know generally you're a pretty quick updater, in like three or four years you know you'll probably upgrade again. Or if you need a computer now, or let's say you just like this design, then get it because this is a pretty great Mac in general. A lot of things that are great about it like I talked about in the first half of this video. But because this is such a solid, easy to recommend all in one, there's a lot of buyers of iMacs that have their computer for, that they want it to be good for seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years, which is an incredibly long time to use a computer. But people keep their computers for a very long time when they buy iMacs. And not a lot of people watching this channel fall into that demographic, but those people should probably wait another year or two for the inevitable transition to Apple Silicon or that iMac redesign, or maybe they both happen at the same time, but that will make it feel much more worth the money. Then again, a lot of those people probably don't care about Apple Silicon or designs of iMacs, so maybe I'm just preaching to no one here. There's something called the Osborne effect, which I'm sure a lot of Apple users have considered, which is a social phenomenon of customers canceling or deferring orders for a current, soon to be obsolete product as an unexpected drawback of a company's announcing a future product prematurely. You can imagine applying that to this current situation, which is people deciding not to buy this pretty great iMac that would probably be fine for them because of the Intel to Apple Silicon transition expected in about a year. Maybe that'll be a better one. And I think Apple's thought a lot about this. And at the end of the day, this iMac was still going to come out anyway, because Apple's relationship with Intel is is a long time coming and these products have just been roadmapped for years now. So it was going to happen anyway. But I think if you're a, a potential customer, just take that extra beat to think about whether you need a computer now or if you can wait a year or two for what will probably be a bit more future proof anyway. That's my two cents. That's been the video. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.